Companies are spending more of their marketing budgets on digital advertising than ever before, and everyone wants a piece of the action. In this guide, I will walk you through the five steps you need to follow if you want to build an online marketing agency from the ground up. However, before we begin our countdown, we would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel and also press the bell icon. Let's get started. Number 1. Develop the necessary skills. You can be as creative and intelligent as anyone in the game, but if you're not prepared and experienced enough to handle the many nuances of account management and client relationships, you'll be looking for the next gig real quick. Some may take years to develop the necessary skills, others may take less. Regardless, I believe you really need to hold down a real job for a while before venturing out on your own. The work environment is much more complex than we realize when we grind in it. There are a lot of expectations, verbal and non-verbal communication gymnastics and politics on top of the actual work you produce. Everything from how an organization is structured to its culture, product and leadership plays a role in how your day-to-day -day and career unfolds. Before you master your digital marketing skills, you need to experience what it's like to work where your clients can work. This will inevitably make you a more understanding and well-rounded professional. When your clients are stressed and may be projecting it onto you, you won't take it personally. That being said, it's important to understand that soft skills only make up 50% of the final product that is you. You have to be good at what you are going to offer as professional services. No matter how smooth your sales game is, sooner or later the client will find out that they have been sold snake oil. You need to be able to drive results. If you're starting your career in client management for larger agencies, I'd recommend that you actually start working on a marketing team or pick up a few small clients to learn the channels and skills you'll be working on. What may be unclear to those who have never specifically been on a marketing team is how much goes into it. In addition to the pressure of production, you have to learn complex systems, and if the team is small, you have to develop different skills to get even the simplest of campaigns off the ground. This includes, but is not limited to, creating landing pages, designing ads, reporting and positioning, learning systems like Marketo, HubSpot, and Salesforce, proper tracking implementation, spending hours on a promotion only to watch it fail, a lot of pressure to produce. The advantage of client management is that many of these aspects are taken care of before they reach you. However, having experience working on these things allows you to add value by actually knowing what you're talking about when something they give you doesn't work. It also helps you deal with the pressure of delivering quality results because you've been there before, many times. Number 2. Become a supplier before you become a founder. Having a job that pays and allows you to undergo brain surgery without a lifetime of debt is a luxury many of us take for granted. Taking the leap into working for yourself has a list of risks so long it could warrant a blog post of its own. What mitigates most of this risk is actually establishing the foundations of the business before you decide to do it full-time. I suggest doing some side work for a period of time, while holding down a full-time job for various reasons, the main ones being. It allows you to strike out on your own without having to take any chances. You get a taste of the entrepreneurial life when you start doing side jobs. From invoicing to having to set aside extra money for taxes, the small but very important elements of running your own business come into play. If you want to still have a full-time job, you also need to manage your time wisely. That means working nights and weekends when you'd rather be watching Netflix. Building relationships as a supplier is also valuable in that it can bring you referrals. If you are able to pay your bills as a contractor, then switching to a single-person agency will be much easier than starting from scratch. Another aspect of managing clients as a side gig is that it allows you to gain experience on construction contracts. You will need to get used to the process of putting together a proposal, then a contract, and then signing the necessary documentation, NDA, etc. It's a part of the game that you'll want to streamline to reduce the time you spend taking on new clients. It allows you to build valuable relationships. If you can get some side work through mutual contacts, former co-workers, or simply networking yourself, it will give you the experience needed to build and maintain client relationships. Having to negotiate the cost of your services is another skill that many soon overlook. Your time and expertise are worth something. 
no matter how well you know the person on the other end. Building the skill to know how much you should charge for a particular project or service will become extremely valuable in the future. Number 3. Create the right business model. There are many different ways to start a digital marketing agency. The services you provide and the way you charge for your work become a critical part of how effectively your business is run over time. Hourly. Many consultants choose to bill their clients on an hourly basis. This is because he spends a lot of time with clients in person, either on the phone or in person. This billing model becomes muddy after longer and more complex service offerings. Fluctuations in digital marketing hours for a particular client are common, will vary greatly over time. There are a number of factors at play. Setting up and running brand new campaigns or promotions, restructuring accounts, time spent on calls, and maintaining something that works well for them. It's becoming difficult to say I spent X amount of hours per week on it, so I'll charge you that way. It can also make the client anxious if they start asking how long certain events take in a week. Unless you offer one-on-one -on -one consulting as part of your service offering, I would stay away from the hourly billing model. Flat Holder The flat mount is the simplest of all price models. You assess how much work and time are worth for a particular client and you both agree on a flat monthly fee. In addition to simplicity, it allows you to reduce any friction when it comes time to send the invoice. The client knows exactly how much it will cost them. And if you meet their expectations, they will have no problem paying it. The downside is if you have a client that grows exponentially over time. I suggest having an agreement in the contract that guarantees this price for a period of time, perhaps on a quarterly basis. Then you can negotiate again once that time is up. The biggest advantage of the deposit-based model is that it allows you to forecast your revenue and hypothetically see how much you will earn if your current clients stay for a full 12 months. This is essential for business growth because you can set goals and prepare for setbacks. This also plays a big factor when it is necessary to hire or outsource work. Percentage Spend This pricing model is very popular with agencies because it takes into account the client's growth potential and scalability. After agencies reach a certain maturity, they will reject clients with little or no pre-existing spend. My suggestion is to start with a flat retainer fee as above and then as your agency grows, implement a percentage spend model above the retainer. This makes it clear to the client that if they want to scale and spend more, it will require more work on your end to make it happen. Commission-based. This is one that agencies often use to gain a competitive edge over others. Basically, they only get paid when the client makes money from the sale. It sounds tempting at first because you want to build trust with the client that you are doing everything in your power to help them be successful. People who have had unsuccessful experiences with agencies often report that they have paid all kinds of money only to get no results or return on investment. That kind of gun-for-hire approach can seem really exciting to a client who's been burned before. Number 4. Define your niche. When you're starting out, it's easy to get carried away by the prospect of working with any business. The idea of having to reject anyone can cause anyone a significant amount of cognitive dissonance when their livelihood is at stake. With that being said, there are thousands of digital marketing agencies and consultants out there. Some of them specialize, but many do not. If referrals aren't flowing like salmon from Capistrano, you'll need to stand out and create a unique selling proposition when reaching out to new prospects. Beyond the added value of specializing within an industry or client type, focusing your services on a clearly defined niche has countless benefits. Here are a few of the most notable. It makes onboarding easier. When you take on anyone as a client, there are so many variables that you need to be aware of before deciding whether or not they are good to do business with. When your ideal customer is clearly defined, this process becomes easier because you know what types of questions and information you need to get from them. You also have insight into how these businesses operate internally, as well as how much you would charge them on average. It boosts your skill set exponentially. If you've learned digital marketing, specifically paid, you can basically run ads for most businesses. However, you need to learn your target market and how to formulate effective messaging. This can take a lot of time when the business is unfamiliar or abstract from what you are used to working with, which inevitably causes problems in the beginning if things don't go so well. 
Number 5. Decide how you want to scale. When you tell people you're going to run your own agency or consultancy, they get the impression that you're going to rent office space and hire a lot of staff. It is often the worst decision you can make. If you're like 99% of the population, chances are you have bills to pay. If you want to start and grow, you must first make sure that you can personally survive. The key to building a successful agency is to be highly skilled at what the agency does first. Managing your own accounts over a period of time will not only allow you to hone these skills, but also make it much easier to find talented help because you understand the skills and knowledge required for the job. You also need to understand what the cost of this help means to you financially. What is the bounce rate of your clients? Average customer lifetime value? How do you get new clients? Hiring an employee adds another layer of complexity to all of this. Convincing someone to come work for you is another matter entirely. Employees are employees because they want security. So if you're not at a point where you can offer them benefits and pay them well, they won't be interested in the gig. The cost-effective antidote to this problem is simple. Find a supplier. There are so many talented people willing and able to help you on contract. You don't have to provide benefits to these people, and they are an easy write-off on your taxes. The ability to delegate monotonous or time-consuming tasks to a trusted contractor is a huge burden off your shoulders while you focus on business. This method allows you to scale to the point where it makes more sense to have a full-time employee. Contractors may decide to join you full-time if all goes well and if they have already proven their worth to you. All of this advice stems from the agency's own founding. If you have a partner or two who want to do it with you, then it changes things quite a bit. This will split the profits and you will either have to charge higher rates or take on more clients to make it mutually beneficial to the point where it is better than having a normal day job. Just something to keep in mind. Make a decision. There are many advantages and disadvantages to running your own business and you will need to be able to weather the storm to reap the benefits. It's a dramatic life event and you have to approach it as such. If you feel early on that you're not ready for it, then don't drag it out any longer than you have to. If you make a decision but don't believe in it, you will fail. You have to commit. Once you do, you may find how incredibly fulfilling it is to run your own digital marketing agency. So that's it for today. If you find this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with others. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new uploads. In the end, thanks for watching and see you next time.